We asked them to sort of follow four general guidelines in their approach to Ramadan. One is to raise awareness of Ramadan's significance to Muslim students because they don't, if, if no one else knows why it's important for these students to be doing what they're doing or why if it's so such an integral part of their identity, then it's hard for even those adults who are of the best of intentions to provide them with that support. So we're asking them to help us raise awareness within the adults and other students in the community to know what's going on, right? Um, and then we asked for accommodations for fasting students. You know, that's a plethora of different kinds of accommodations, which we'll go into in more detail. The other thing we ask for is for them to be flexible and understanding that this is not an average sort of observance. It is difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be a time of restraint, right? When we're, we're restraining ourselves, there's going to, with that comes some difficulties. It's also a time for many young people to learn that balance of how to strike the balance between their religious practices and our observances with their day-to-day -day, um, responsibilities as students or, you know, as young people. Um, and then the last thing we asked is for them to foster an inclusive environment. And that's a lot of what, you know, Dina's going to be talking about and Sakina will be mentioning some of the things that they're doing to just, you know, make um, Ramadan and Eid fun. Ram it's something that everyone can be a part of and to really understand what um, it's all about. So those are sort of the sort of general guidelines that we discussed with them. Um, and then we provided them with an information sheet, which, um, you know, I, I sort of tweaked it a little bit based on our needs here in our community and the questions and um, sort of concerns that had come up over these last few years, but it's based on ING's um, Ramadan information sheet. So most of it is um, from them. So I just wanted to acknowledge the great uh, resources and support that um, they provide. So, um, you know, I, what I was going to do, but my, uh, uh, my iPad is not working, but if you guys would like to come up afterwards and just sign in or give me your email address so that way I can share this information with you. If anybody wants it, please feel free to come up to me after and I'll get your email. Um, but, uh, yeah. So there's a, a, you know, a, a long information sheet that you can utilize with your teachers, with your principals, to give them um, in general information about Eid and Ramadan. And then the last thing that we did, which, again, I'm going to give a lot of the lion's share of the credit for the specific accommodations to um, our uh, high schoolers, because they were very specific about their requests, and I really appreciated that. Um, so, uh, you know, we had some... We ask that teachers make an effort to become aware of the students that are fasting in their classroom, right? So we ask them to try to, you know, to um, make sure that you know, they are aware of who those students are. That being said, it is our responsibility as Muslim families to let the school know that your child is observing Ramadan. Whatever that looks like for your child. If your child is a fourth grader and they're only going to be fasting once a week, then you need to let the um, classroom teacher know that so that they know what to expect. They know, okay, your child might be sleepier that day. They might, um, you know, need to take, you know, take an, um, a few minutes to go wash their face if they're feeling tired. They may want to be able to be in the library at lunchtime. Whatever those requests and flexibilities are that you would like to have um, for that situation, you need to be um, asking for that and you need to give them the time to find ways to accommodate that right uh, another thing I want to point out is lunchtime is lunchtime for everyone right that's your teachers break time too right so if we're asking for them to do anything additional outside of what is their normal schedule then just like you would accommodate or you would ask for from anyone you're going to be patient and kind when you ask for those right this is yes we want um, accommodations but at the same time they're going out of their way to make that possible for us so we want to be you know as kind as possible when we're asking Asking for those things. Um, the last, uh, the next thing that we talked about is. Um waking up very early for suhoor, there's many students that want to be able to work early in the morning before school starts, right? So um, as the students pointed out, many times um, the teachers at, at the secondary level, they make assignments due at 
11.59. And that's sort of their default setting. That assignment is due on March 3rd at 11.59 at night. Now, if you're going to be like sleeping right when you, when you come back from school because you want to take a nap and then you're going to have a start, maybe you don't even start your homework till 9 o'clock at night. So maybe having that extra time to do some work at night, to go to bed, wake up at Sahur, and finish your work in the morning is actually really, really meaningful to you, right? So instead of getting late assignments, they asked for the teachers to make that accommodation and set the assignments for, to, do, to be due at 8 o'clock in the morning. I mention this because it seems like a small thing, but it can make a really big difference in a student's life. And this may look different at your schools and at with the people that you're working with, you know. So I would suggest that you, you know, tailor it to what you need. But there are things that, like that that they wouldn't even think about as something that could make our students' lives easier. Um, in addition to that, we ask that um, students obviously be given an accommodation to refrain from extreme physical activity, like running the mile or pacers. Now, I know when I was young, when we asked for to like not have to do PE in um, Ramadan, they just sent us to the library and we got to write a book report or like hang out for the entire month in the library. That is not the case anymore, right? So I think it was because of so few of us that you know, many times they would sort of let things slide. But now it's really that they still want the kids to be outdoors and they still want them to participate in class activities, but it may be like helping take out equipment, sitting in the shade, playing, you know, a different game in the gym rather than running the mile or doing pacers or sitting outside in the heat for, you know, an hour. So um, it, we're not telling them exactly how to handle it, but we are asking them to give an alternative, right? Um, so that where those things come up and you know how they make those accommodations, they have the flexibility to do what works for them and what works for that school and that classroom. Um, we also ask them to note that uh, this lack of energy that the students have is not necessarily an indication of their lack of commitment. In fact, for us, it a, it's a sig uh, signifies their commitment to doing something that is an adult requirement. They're stepping up to do something that is um, what is an obligation for them as uh, Muslims. So we, and this like requires a lot of discipline to do, right? So we're asking them to recognize that. And when students are tired, give them an opportunity. You know, if there's something that's out of the ordinary, talk to the students about it rather than escalating it into a behavioral issue. Um, the other thing that we mentioned, and I think is really important because I did hear this a few times, is Ramadan is not a time for discussing political acts of terror, right? Terrorism is a political act. Whatever the justification is at the end of the day, it's a political act, not one of faith, right? And we clearly denounce all acts of terrorism in Islam. So if that comes up, that is something you should definitely flag for an administrator or for a superintendent that this is not something that we, um, you know, would, would, that we appreciate and should not be happening at all. Um, and then the last couple are around uh, Eid al-Fitr. So we gave them the dates for Eid and um, told them that, you know, students will be taking one to two days off, whatever is comfortable for your family. You know, we have that sort of window where Eid can be. So whatever dates are work for your family, you can take those dates off um, for Eid. And then we also asked that no testing be done on Eid day for the students that are observing um, Ramadan. That doesn't mean that the teacher is not going to have a test that day. They, the teachers may have a test, they may, the school may have an activity, but they will all offer alternatives to our students, right? They um, can't change the whole schedule for our students, but they will make accommodations for them. We also ask that they not give them the test the next day immediately after Eid, because that just ruins Eid if you have to study and do homework, right? So we asked for that as well. So I think, you know, we want to be as um, flexible as we can be by not asking for how they make these accommodations, but asking very clearly for what it is that we need in order for the holiday to be enjoyable and for us to really enjoy and practice our uh, observance of Ramadan.